Hello again, and this is Mr. Underkoffler, and today we're going to be looking at part two of the guided notes on measures of center, mean, median, and mode. I'm backtracking here. This is what the title was from the first page, measures of center, mean, median, and mode. And we are doing part two today, which is going to be the third, fourth, and fifth pages of your guided notes, starting with the third page where it says at the top how an outlier, or possibly outliers, plural, can affect measures of center. Now, quick review, when I say measures of center, I'm talking about the mean, the median, or the mode. All right, they all describe where the center of the data is located, so that's why they're called measures of center. All right, so let's go ahead and read the box of information here. Follow along as I read this out loud to you. An outlier is an extreme value that is significantly lower or significantly higher than the other numbers in the set of data. In a future lesson, in a future lesson, we will learn how to officially calculate outliers. When a set of data has an outlier, it can make the mean become significantly lower or significantly higher than it would be without the outlier included. However, an outlier does not usually have a significant impact on the median and it rarely impacts the mode. All right, so to explain what in the world I'm talking about, I've given you a very simple example here on the left of this vertical bar. Let's say we had five numbers in our data, and I already put them in the least greatest order for you, the seven, eight, the other eight, the nine, and the 11. So if I would find the mean, I'd add up the numbers in my calculator, or just add it up without a calculator, this one isn't that hard, then uh, I get 43. Divide by however many numbers we have, which is what, five numbers, and that would give me 8.6 or 8 and 3 fifths as my mean. All right, the median is the number in the middle. There are how many numbers here? Five numbers. So the third number would be the median. You don't believe me. Five divided by two is 2.5, so you round up third number. And this is pretty easy to see. This number is definitely in the middle because there's two numbers to the left and two numbers to the right. So I definitely found the middle value here. So that eight is the median. All right, the mode is whatever number showed up the most often. This set of data had two eights and there was no other value that showed up more than those two times. So the eight is the mode. Now that's a real simple example. Let's now take that exact same set of data, those five numbers, and let's throw in an outlier. So you all can pretty much agree with me that these original five numbers were all pretty close to eight, weren't they? Which is why we kept seeing this eight for our measures of center, didn't we? That should be no surprise. But now we have a number that is significantly higher than all the rest. Remember, that's what an outlier is. An outlier is an extreme value. Why do I say extreme? Because it's significantly higher or significantly lower than the rest of the data. And I think we can all agree, when your data is pretty close to all being around eight, then throwing a number as big as 29 is significantly higher than the rest of your numbers in the data. So how will that affect our measures of center? Well, let's find out. If we add these six numbers together on our calculator, we would get 72. Now to find the mean, we would divide by six because there's six numbers, and that gives me a mean of 12. Do you see how that did have a significant impact on the mean, throwing in this one outlier? because now my mean is 12. It used to be 8.6. That's a pretty significant jump going up higher. And that shouldn't surprise us. When you have one number that is way higher than all the rest of the data, that will make your mean bigger than what it would be if that number was not included. And we can see the proof here with the 12 compared to what it used to be for the mean of 8.6. But will it have a significant impact on the median? Well, we have six numbers. 6 divided by 2 is 3. That means the third number and the one after it, remember when there's an even amount of data, there's two numbers in the middle. Those two numbers, I have to figure out what's halfway in between. Well, this one's pretty easy. Halfway in between 8 and 9 would be 8.5. So my median is 8.5. Is that significantly different than what it used to be? Uh, no. I mean, it used to be 8. Now it's 8.5. So that's why I told you up here in this box that an outlier, even though it will have an impact on the mean, it doesn't normally significantly impact the median. And, and here's your proof. I mean, it made it go up a little bit, but 
Not by much. Uh, what about the mode? The two eights are still the only two numbers that showed up more than once, right? So they're definitely the two numbers that are showing up the most often. So did my mode change at all? No. And that's what I basically told you here. Rarely would an outlier ever impact the mode. So there you go. So this is what this page of Guidenos is trying to present to you. How an outlier, which is a number that's significantly higher or significantly lower than the rest of the data, how that could impact the mean, but not normally impact the median much or, or the mode much. So that's what this page of Guider Notes is trying to get you to understand. This is an important idea in statistics. All right, so we have problem six, A, B, and is there a part C? No, I do not believe there is. Oh yeah, there is, sorry, my bad. I had it on the next slide. So I believe you should be able to do these parts on your own. You definitely should be able to do part A on your own. So let's go ahead, hit pause, do part A on your own. This is just finding mean, median, mode. There's no outliers being thrown in yet. In fact, you can see percent grades from a quiz not including outliers were as follows. So go ahead, hit pause, do part A on your own. All right, I hope you did part A on your own because now I'm going to show you what you should have got. If you add the numbers together, you would get 819. There were 10 numbers total. So you divide by 10 to get the mean. And that is 81.9. Now, why is it percent? Only because it told me in the original problem that these were percent grades from a quiz. So that's why, you know, the unit of measure is percent. If they were, you know, the number of hot dogs eaten at a park, you know, from six different months in a row, then I would say hot dogs for the unit of measure on my mean. But these are percent grades, so I say percent. All right, where were we? We found the mean. Now we have to find the median. Now, were these numbers in least to greatest order? Uh, no. So I hope you put them in least to greatest order. There were a total of 10 numbers, right? We already figured that out for the mean because we divided by 10. So what's 10 divided by 2? That would be 5. And so I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the fifth number and the one after it. Now, why the one after it? Because when there's an even amount of data, 10 numbers, then there's two numbers in the middle. All right. We need to figure out what is halfway between this 80 and this 80. Well, that's kind of a silly question. They're both 80, right? So halfway in between still 80. So the median is 80, 80%. All right, what's the mode? Uh, which number showed up the most often? We had three 80s, didn't we? Um, no other number showed up three times. In fact, no other number showed up two times. So the mode is definitely the 80. And again, guys, the only reason I'm putting percent signs here is because these were percent grades. That's why the unit of measure is percent. All right, part B says, suppose there were two outliers on the quiz, 25 and 38. So what I'm trying to tell you is, say we still had these original 10 numbers, but now we have two more numbers. And you can see they are definitely outliers. I mean, look at them. A 25% and a 38% on a quiz, That's those are not scores you would want to get on a quiz. They are significantly lower than all the other numbers here that we originally had in our data. So we now have 12 numbers, the original 10, but the two small numbers that would be included as well. So using that information, the original 10 numbers and these two new numbers, I now need you to do the work all over again to figure out how would the measures of center be affected. And yes, it does say, justify your answers with your work. So you're gonna to need to do the work all over again for the mean, for the median, and the mode. Well, mode doesn't really have work, but you get what I mean. To answer the question, how would the measures of center be affected? So hit pause on the video, do this part B on your own. Okay, I hope you did part B on your own. Let's see how you did. All right, so remember how we used to have, remember how we used to have a, uh, a sum of the data being 819? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So we used to have a sum of data of 819, but now we have to add on the 25 and the 38. So that would give me a sum of 882. We now have 12 numbers, not just the original 10, but these two extra numbers. So 12 numbers in that, if I divide, it would give me 73.5, so the mean is 73.5%. What about the median? All right, so here's my numbers now in least to greatest order. Notice 
the two outliers are thrown at the beginning because they're the two lowest numbers. We have 12 numbers. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The sixth number and the number after it, which is the seventh number, they are the two numbers in the middle. And that means halfway in between them is going to be the median. And again, they're both 80. So halfway in between is still 80. So your median is 80. Uh, sound familiar? Wasn't that the median before? Oh, yeah, it was. Um, who's the mode? The mode would still be 80 because there's three 80s and there's no other numbers that are showing up more than, you know, three times here. So 80 is still the number that shows up the most often. That is your mode. All right. So what was I asked to do? Well, I'm revealing that work there a little bit early. The problem said, how would the measures of center be affected? So how were they affected? Did the median change? No. Did the mode change? No. Did the mean change? Oh yeah, it went down and that shouldn't shock us. Since you have to add all the numbers together and divide by however many you have to get the mean, if you throw in two really small numbers compared to the rest of the data, then that shouldn't shock you that that's gonna lower your mean. Now, how much did it go down by? That's what I accidentally showed you a little bit here too early. Take 81.9, the original mean, minus the new mean, and you can see that it went down by 8.4%. That's a significant drop in our mean. And so let's answer the question, how were the measures of center affected? Here's what we would say. The mean with the outliers now included has, is 8.4% lower than it, what, it, what it used to be without the outliers. The median and the mode, however, stayed the same. By the way, this is why I don't like how our grading system online always shows the mean, because if you have some outliers, that can have a significant impact on the mean, and therefore that's not really the greatest choice, in my opinion, and actually in a lot of textbooks' opinion, for using the mean as your measure of center for that data. And, spoiler alert, we're actually going to talk more about that on the fourth page of the guide notes. But before I get to that, part C, misleading statistics. Using the data that included the two outliers, meaning part B's data. That's what I mean, because that's the two, that's the data that had the two outliers, part B. So using the data that included the two outliers, explain why the mean would be a misleading measure of center for this data. So if you didn't do part C yet, hit pause in the video real quick, write a sentence that answers part C. Okay, I hope you did that. Here we go. You would say what I basically was explaining on the previous page, or not the previous page, the previous slide. The two outliers, the 25 and the 38, were significantly lower than the rest of the data, which made the mean lower than what it should have been or what it would have been without the outliers. Therefore, the mean was a misleading measure of center for this data. And with that in mind, let's go to the fourth page of our guided notes, where the subtitle says, choosing a measure of center that best represents the data. This is a very important concept you need to understand about measures of center. Follow along with me. It says the following table explains which measure of center best represents a set of data depending on the circumstances of the data. Now, I took this information from the Glencoe Pre-Algebra textbook. And so, full disclosure, I didn't make this up on my own. So here's what you need to know. When the data has no outliers, follow along with me here. When the data has no outliers at all, then the mean is a great choice for being an accurate, best representation for the measure of center, just like this uh, subtitle at the top says. When the data ha does have outliers, the median is still a very good choice for the measure of center. Um, also, when there's no big gaps in the middle of the data, then the median is a good choice. Um, I'm not going to give you any, full disclosure, I'm not going to give you any data today that has like a huge gap in the middle, like separating like, you know, the fifth and sixth number or something, having a huge gap in between. So you don't really have to worry about that part here. But when the data does have outliers, the median is still a good choice. When the data has many, many, many repeated numbers, then the mode is actually probably the best choice to describe the measure of center of that data. Now, we're going to use this chart, this information, to do the problems on this page. 
So here we go. Number seven, part A, part B, and there is not a part C, my bad. Problem number eight is a totally different problem. Do these on your own, especially part A. So hit pause in the video, do part A and number seven on your own, then hit play when you're ready for me to go over it. Okay, I hope you've done these problems on your own, at least part A and B of number seven. Finding the mean, add up the numbers you have, you should have got 147, there are nine numbers, so divide by nine, and you get a mean is, now I did round this, now why? Because these were t-shirt prices in dollars, and we have learned in real life in America, two digits after the decimal point, so this rounded to $16.33. Since I rounded, I used the approximately equal to symbol, like we've talked about before during the school year. Okay, so that's the mean. To get the median, were these numbers already in least to greatest order? No, they weren't. So you had to put them in least to greatest order. How many numbers do we have? Um, well, we have nine numbers. That's right, because I divided by nine. So nine divided by two is 4.5, which means round up the fifth number is the middle number. One, two, three, four, five. Here's the proof. There's four numbers to the left, four numbers to the right. This number is definitely right smack dab in the middle. Therefore, the 15 that I highlighted there for you is the median $15. What's the mode? Um, oh, there were three um, t-shirts that were $12. So therefore the mode is gonna be $12. All right, part B. Oh, there is a part C, I'm sorry. I think like three minutes ago, I said there was no part C. My goodness, there was a part C, my bad. Um, part B and part C, if you have not done them on your own yet, Please hit pause in the video. Do part C and part part B and part C on your own. Then hit play when you're ready for me to go over it. Okay, I hope you've done part B and C on your own. Here we go. Part B, which measure of center best represents the data? All right, did you use the chart of information I gave you at the top? When the data has no outliers, the mean is a great choice. When the data does have outliers, the median is still a great choice. Um, I would use the mode for my measure of center. If there was many, many, many repeated numbers, then I would use the mode. So what is the case on this example? Do we have many, many, many repeated numbers? Uh, I mean, the 12 showed up three times, but there were nine numbers total. Three times out of nine, that's not enough for me to choose the mode as my measure of center. Um, did this data have an outlier? Whoa, that 35 should have stuck out as a sore thumb. So. That 35 is an outlier, so I would not choose the mean for my measure of center. I would choose the median. Just like I said here, when the data does have an outlier, the median is an excellent choice. So part B, the median was a great choice to best represent the center of the data because there was an outlier and there were no gaps in the middle of the data. You didn't see any big gaps here between the 14 and the next number of 15 or so on. So the median is the best choice for the measure of center. Not the mean, because there was an outlier, not the mode, because yeah, there were, th you know, the 12 showed up three times, but out of nine, that's not enough for me to choose it. Now, if there were like, you know, seven of the nine numbers were all the same, then I would choose the mode as my measure of center. Part C, misleading statistics. Which measure of center could be used to show that t-shirt prices are cheap at stores in the shopping mall. All right, I hope you did this problem on your own. The word cheap means a very low price. So which measure of center? There's three choices, the mean, the median, or the mode. Those are your measures of center. Could be used to show that the t-shirt prices are cheap. Well, it'd be the value of the three that was the lowest, and that was the mode. So the mode would be the choice of the measure of center that makes it appear as if the t-shirts were pretty cheap across the shopping mall. So that's what you had to basically explain in your own words. Please do not be the kind of kid who copies down every single word of my sentence. Please do not think Mr. Undercoffler has the best sentence structure in the world. That's not the case. As long as you explained what I basically explained, that the mode was the lowest measure of center out of the three, then and that would make it look like the t-shirt the prices were the lowest or the cheapest, then you're good to go. Your explanation's fine. All right, problem number eight. Hit pause on the video. Do this 
multi-part problem on your own. I did not separate this in part A, B, and C, but it's still very similar. It says measure of center, which what measure of center would best represent the data. So make sure you show your work, briefly explain, do uh, number eight on your own, then hit, make sure you hit pause to do that, then hit play when you're ready for me to go over. Okay, I hope you did number eight on your own. Here I go. So we had a total of six numbers, add them up, divide by six. The mean is 63, or sorry, 66.83 repeating feet. Uh, put the numbers in least to greatest order. Uh, there's six numbers, six divided by two is three. So the third and fourth number are the two numbers in the middle and halfway in between them would be 66.5. And so that's your median. The mode was the 65 only because it was the only number that showed up more than one time, showed up two times. So that is your mode. All right, which measure best represents the data? Did we have an outlier? Uh, I would not say so. All of these heights of the basketball team measures here in inches. By the way, oh my goodness, if these are in inches, under Koffer, you have an error. Did you guys catch this? Did you catch my mistake? These are inches. These are not feet. We do not have basketball players that are 65 to 67 feet tall. That would be crazy, okay? I mean, you know, Shaquille O'Neal was tall, but he was like seven foot or seven foot one. Um, my goodness, you better have inches here, guys. This is a typo. Come on, under Koffler. Get with the program. Hopefully you guys caught that error. All right, so let's answer the question. Which measure of center best represents the data? All right, there was no outlier. None of these heights were significantly bigger or significantly smaller than the rest of the data. So that means the mean is a great choice. But let's be honest. The mean was about 66.8. The median's almost the same, isn't it? So I mean, you could still use the median. It's fine. I'm going to guess you probably used the chart at the top of the page and you said the median, the mean best represents the data since there was no outliers. But let's be honest, if the median is really close to the mean and the mean was a good representation for the center of the data, then the median is also going to be a good choice for the center of the data. All right. So you could have also chose the median. All right. So that's how we can talk about outliers and choosing the best choice for the center of the data, depending on what our data has, the circumstances that exist in our data. All right, the last page of the guided notes is on understanding dot plots. And by the way, dot plots are very similar to something you might have seen in sixth grade or fifth grade math called line plots, where you would have a number line, and instead of having dots stacked on top of each other, you might have like X's stacked on top of each other. They, they, they act the exact same way, okay? Dot plots, line plots, they're actually the same type of thing. Instead of having letters stacked on top of each other, we have dots stacked on top of each other. So let's understand number nine. Now, number nine is already typed up for you on your guided notes, but I want to talk you through it piece by piece so you fully understand it. First of all, let's read it. The number of people who paid different monthly rents is shown below. All right, we can see it here above this number line. Now, I need you to understand what this graph even represents. First of all, make sure you understand what the problem said. It said that these are monthly rents, okay? And this is showing you the number of people by having stacked dots who paid the different monthly rents that they happened to pay. So what this means is there's one person See this one dot over here on the left? One person who paid a monthly rent of, what is this? About 650, okay? There's two people, two dots, for two people who paid monthly rent of $1,200 for their, I guess these are probably apartments. And then you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six people, because there's six dots, that six people who paid $800 for the rent, and then one, two, three dots representing three people who pay, what is this, $850, halfway in between, 800 and 900, three people who paid $850 for their monthly rents. So that's what this graph represents. And if you count, there's a total of 12 dots. So that means there's 12 people that this graph represents. Why people? Because I said, number of people, 
who pay different monthly rents. So 12 people represented in this dot plot. And I already explained this to you. One person paid 650, six people paid 800, three people paid 850, two people paid 1200. If you would write that out in least to greatest order, and I'm not saying you would have to, but that's what it would represent. Again, I'm not saying you would have to. I mean, this graph pretty much already shows you this. You don't necessarily have to write that out. All right, so part A, how would I find the mean? Well, you could just add all these numbers together, but there is a slightly quicker way of doing this. One person paid 650, six people paid 800. There's six dots above the 800. So you can do six times 800 because there's six dots at the 800. Three times 850 because there's three dots at the 850. Two times 1200 because again, there's two dots at the 1200. And so you can get these like subtotals here. Six times 800 is 4,800. Three times 850 is 2,550. Two times 1,200 is 2,400. And then, of course, you know, one times 650 is 650. You don't really have to do one times 650. Then add those together. Now, don't divide by four. Remember, there's 12 dots here, right? So you're dividing by 12, right? 12 people, 12 dots. So you're dividing by 12. And then that would give you a mean of, now, why did I round to the nearest hundredth? It's monthly rents, what they pay, dollars and cents. So $866.67 is approximately equal to what the mean would be. Make sure you have the dollar sign. And then I could also find the median and the mode. Now, do you remember how many numbers we had in this data? There were 12 dots if you counted. What is 12 divided by 2? 6. So that means the 6th and 7th numbers are your middle numbers. Now, the easiest way to do this is start on the left on your number line where the dots start and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my 6th number. And the one above it is the 7th number. So that's my sixth and seventh numbers in the data. They're both 800. You don't believe me? Here, I'll show it to you the way that you used to see it on the other examples from these guided notes. One, two, three, four, five, sixth and seventh numbers. Like I told you, they're both the last two 800s that we had. So you don't have to write it out, okay? You can just get it from the dots if you understand what this is representing. I mean, if you want to write it out, write it out, but you don't have to. So the sixth and seventh numbers are both the $800, aren't they? And that means what's halfway in between 800 and 800? Well, of course, it's still 800. So the median is $800. What's the mode? Well, which value on the number line had the most dots? That's going to give you the value of what shows up the most often, which is what mode means. There were way more $800 rents than any other dollar amount for the rents, right? I mean, there was three of the 850s, two of the 1200s, but there were six of these 800s. And yes, you, you used to see that going left to right when you used to write the numbers in least to greatest order, but the dot plot already shows you that. So with no work needed, you can just look at the graph and understand there are six people who paid $800. That means the most often reoccurring rent here was the $800. And that's how you can use a dot plot to easily figure out median and easily figure out mode. Mean's going to take a little bit more work, but that's how a dot plot works. All right, with that in mind, now that I led you through number nine, number 10 is waiting for you to do it on your own. So hit pause on the video and do number 10, part A, B, and C. And is there a part D? I don't want to. Nope, there's not. So do parts A, B, and C on your own for number 10. Hit pause on the video. Do them right now on your own. Okay, I hope you already had hit pause on the video and did these parts A, B, and C of number 10 on your own. Let's see how you did. First of all, did you count the correct number of dots here? There were one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I believe there were, <laughs> honestly, I'm forgetting. Oh, there you go. I'm cheating. I'm looking at my work here. 17 numbers, all right? So there was one of these 20s, 
two of these 35s, you can see that right here, two dots on the 35, three of these 50s, so three times 50, and then 11 dots at $60. And these were all, what, what were these? Video game prices. Hey, for those of you who like video games, I did this problem for you. You're, you're welcome. All right, so if you followed the work I did for part A of number nine, I'm doing the same kind of work here. Do you really have to do one times 20? No, it's just 20. Two times 35 is 70. Three times 50 is 150, because there's three dots at 50, so it's 150. And then 11 times 60 is 660. Add these together, 900. Why am I dividing by 17? There were 17 dots total. And that will give you a mean of $52.94. Yes, I rounded that to the nearest hundredth, because dollars and cents, you round to the nearest hundredth. All right, what's the median? Remember how there were 17 numbers? What's 17 divided by 2? Well, 16 divided by 2 is 8. So 17 divided by 2 is 8.5. That means, round up, the ninth number is the number in the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is my ninth dot. If you don't believe me, there were 8 dots before it. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight dots after it. So that is the not the number in the middle, which will be my median. All right. So here's what I just said in words. You don't have to write that out, but that's what we were just thinking about, right? And so that ninth number is sixty dollars. There it is. Really, no work is needed if you can just count dots starting on the left of the number line and counting your way up. You can count to the ninth dot. There it is highlighted for you. That is at the value of 60, isn't it? So that is your middle number. All right, what's the mode? Uh, should be pretty easy to see from this dot plot. There are 11 dots at the 60. That means there were 11 of these 60s that are being represented on this graph. Therefore, the mode is that value of $60 because there were 11 of those 60s. Only three of the 50s only two of the 35s and only one of the 20s. So there you go, $60 is your mode. And that concludes part two of this five page packet of guided notes on measures of center, mean, mean, and mode. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.